couple of quick things. One is, uh, as you see here, uh, we have a couple of, a few tools actually that we would love to make you aware of. One is the campaign analyzer. So uh, we hear a lot about uh, segmentation, segmenting your channels, your email, your banners, your uh, page search, your organic, all that good stuff. So uh, we, our Web Analytics Manager, Aladdin, created this cool tool. It is for now for free, so you can sign up with it, no charge. We might charge you next week. I don't know yet. At one, at one point, we'll start charging. For now, it's free. You can get all, it's a repository of all your tags. So if you have, you know how you have to tag all your URL with UTM parameters? So this is, a, instead of doing this in a spreadsheet or on you know, Google Sheet, you can have it here in that cloud, and you can uh, share it with your uh, team members. So you can have consistent naming conventions, you know, no uppercase, lowercase, all that good stuff taken care of in one. And it has a sh uh, URL shortener built in. It's really, really powerful tool. So feel free to use it. Also, we have a lot of resources. If you are struggling with regexes and whatnot, I have no idea what these things are, but I hope they're needed. Uh, you can talk to Eric, I'll explain what these things are, but you can go to this site, and there's a nice, very short, 14 minute video by Eric on how to use regex and, and exclude all your internal traffic and all that good stuff. Also, we have a very active blog, uh, so join, you know, follow us, read it, make use of it, comment, share your thoughts. We're launching a gademos.com website. It is live as of this morning, uh, not fully branded yet, but it's, we will have uh, videos, weekly videos, uh, not just text content, but video content on how to do things in, in GA. So please check it out. And uh, some of these things will be merging soon, but for now they're still there. GA tip of the day and GoogleAnalyticsTest.com. Not 100% up to date because Googlers keep us very busy. They keep innovating, and we can't catch up with all the things that's going on. But it's still a good site if you want to test your know-how on Google Analytics. Use it. And we have an Evolve in Dubai. We love to see all of you there. May 25th, Krista will continue. So join Krista in Dubai. And we have a whole lot of training coming up. If you want to sign up, please do so. So before I, one more thing I want to show you. So this is the coolest thing. This is this last bit. Uh, that. So, uh, nothing new. Has anyone seen this recently? So it's analytics.usa.gov. There was an announcement by the White House two weeks ago where well, there's actually there's an open data initiative by the White House about maybe three years ago and uh, where uh, federal agencies were asked to ensure they have web analytics to enhance the user experience for all of us citizens. And um, the government, the GSA, the purchasing arm of the government, chose Google Analytics Premium. Yes, yes, yes. And then uh, about a couple years ago, they chose in order to be the consulting company to help enable the federal agencies better understand the user behavior of their sites and improve that experience. Uh, about uh, two weeks ago, I think exactly, or three weeks ago, there was a, a new announcement where all that data is publicly available. So what you see here is um, all the data from all the federal sites, about 3,800 websites, actually all under one gigantic Google Analytics Premium account. Billion, 1.3, this is public information, so I can share. 1.3, well, 1.42 billion heads, and then 1.3, I think, uh, billion heads last month. Just amazing, you know, a whole lot of, whole lot of data. The most interesting thing is the top pages visited. This is the top page visited as of today. Where is my view? Right? <laughs> so, so, you know, what is what is you know what is what, what do you do for your government? What does the government do for you? I don't know. So, but that's what people are looking. It's tax season. Everybody, you know, want to know what they're doing. But it is um, it's it's uh, it's useful for a lot of you know they, you can like. Government uh, agencies can look at this and sort of, sort of look at user adoption of mobile, tablet, browsers, and they can make improvements to a lot of the key services. So I thought it was pretty cool to share with you, but enough of me. Uh, we have a, an amazing amount of speakers uh, for, the, for, the, for this next session. Before we introduce John from Avago, I want to have Krista, my friend here, and, and co-chair of the local DA chapter, Krista Seiden. And as of last night, she is the winner of the Practitioner of the Year Award for the Digital Analytics Association. Thank you, Ferris. Um, okay, so I think we've heard a lot today already about some awesome training resources that are available that Eenor has that are online. Um, so we could hear less training in education. And nobody loves training in education. That's really exciting. Well, if you do, and you're just 
and secretly quiet about it. Um, so GA has a lot of really good training and education resources on our health center, on our developer site, on all of those kind of things, our social channels. So Adam, who you heard speak earlier, he manages a lot of our GA social channels. He's constantly posting tips and great articles, so follow the Google Analytics handle on Twitter and on um, Google Plus for a lot of really good stuff there. Um, our GA Help Center, who has ever visited that? Good, more hands, okay, good. It just got a facelift this week, so it's got a nice new shiny look, check it out. And uh, we heard just right before this about some really cool GTM um, information from Eric and Stefan. So who here uses GTM? Good, okay, you guys are getting a little more lively. Uh, all right, last week we just posted a new section on the GA and the GTM Help Center, and it's called Their Solutions Guide. And it's a, I think, 11 article series about installing GA via GTM. So a bunch of different things you can do there, cross-domain tracking, setting up an event tag, setting up a PHP tag, double-click AdWords, AdWords uh, tags, definitely go check that out. It's a really, really good resource. We've heard from a lot of our users, maybe some of you guys, that there wasn't a lot of good documentation about how to, at the practitioner's perspective, implement GA via GTM. So hopefully that now solves a lot of those problems for you guys. All right, and then finally, um, as Ferris mentioned, we co-chair the DASF chapter together along with Charles from Blast. And we are hosting a networking and uh, career conversation panel this month on the 23rd. It's a Thursday here in San Francisco, downtown at Row Restaurant from 6 to 8 p.m. So if you guys work in the city or in the Bay Area, um, you want to come to a really good after work networking event, um, hear from a few people in the industry who have done some really cool things in their career, you should come join us. It's free if you're a DAA member, and I think there's just a small fee if you're not. Um, so definitely come to that. I think uh, Ferris might have even hired somebody from the last one where he met some really good resources, so if you're looking for a job, it's a great way to network. Thanks. John Bird with Avago Technologies. Uh, John presented at Metrics United about a year years ago. Um, he won't talk about technology. He, he's, he's not going to get into the weeds in terms of Google Tag Manager and events. That's important, very important. Uh, Eric's going to get me for now. <laughs> uh, but uh, more important, not as importantly, sorry, um, John has actually gone, I think, twice or at least maybe twice or three times through a whole process of planning and implementing. Um, a web analytics uh, sort of practice and growing that practice within a, a high-tech uh, B2B environment. So he'll, he'll cover, no slides, he'll tell you a story about how they've done it at Avago and how they build them in, in, uh, internal processes uh, and practices. So welcome to Anders. Thank you, Paris. Hi, Good afternoon. Uh, as first said, my name is John Burns, and I am the Web Marketing Operations Manager for Avago Technologies, formerly LSI Corporation, uh, just down the road in San Jose. I'm here today to testify as a Google Analytics practitioner in my vertical. This will be a verbal case study, if you will. Uh, as LSI, which is now Avago, was, uh, was and is a semiconductor company. We are a B2B business, mostly through direct sales, uh, distribution model, so most of our historical web focus has been reflective of that business, which is to support current customers with information and sometimes software for our products. And this focus uh, is also very tightly interwoven and oftentimes overlaps with the pre-sales information that our customers need when they're in the consideration phase of their buyer's journey. As websites go, it's not that exciting, but I think I might be strange because I kind of enjoy it. One reason I enjoy it is that, as with all websites, there's always ways to improve and to grow. And that's exactly what we've been able to do, especially from the analytics perspective in the past few years. We're just like many of you, trying to provide the right information to the right people at the right time as they go through that buyer's journey. Now, my story today begins with a ripping tale of what we In 2012, I took over a web team that was underinvested and starved for analysis and insight. 
In the area of analytics, there have been years of neglect, just monitoring page views and visitors, and making their choices based on opinions and conjecture, and not data. And one day, it dawned on folks that pay grades much higher than mine, that they might like to know a little bit about the thousands and thousands of people that were visiting our websites every month. So to make a long story short, we eventually chose to invest more in this whole web analytics thing. So like I did with my first car, which was very exciting, when the light turned green, I didn't really think about where I was going or what it would look like when I got there. I just got started. All too often, I've heard of cases where folks, much like yourself, may be struggling to get things off the ground for all kinds of reasons, especially, uh, or even when funding isn't among them. Scenarios where, in whatever company, the, the value of data is known, the benefits of data-driven insights are very real to them, but it's important to note here that investment is not just about writing the check, it's not about the program dollars or the salaries, it's also about investing in time, investing in attention, and investing in business processes to make it so. And I believe that it was our ability to do that, not to simply throw money at the problem, hire the consultants, and call it solved, but to take the time to truly partner, collaborate, and learn with the people with the expertise, and business stakeholders as well. So let's get started. At the beginning, it was not as awesome as I might be making it sound. Uh, and you might expect the same thing if you're just getting started. Much like a kid learning to ride a bike, there will be bumps and bruises along the way. It will not be smooth sailing right out of the gate. But start anyway. Push off, start pedaling. And once you've started, keep going. Pedaling the bicycle should not be an afterthought to this process. Do the work, build a foundation of clean and accurate data, collect the inputs from your stakeholders. One of our early steps that contributed greatly to building the foundation for what was to become our data-driven culture was a simple open forum of stakeholders gathered to talk about what they hoped to figure out when looking at the data. We collected the product marketers, the corporate marketers, customer support teams, investor relations, got them all in a room, and we did a simple exercise. Tell us, what questions are you trying to answer? What do you want to find out about the site visitors, your customers? What validations do you need? What confirmations do you need to help you make better choices in the business? And we really thought, or hoped really, that by asking these questions we'd gain some amazing insight into their needs. But when we counted up all the answers that came in out of left field that gave us those big light bulb going on moments, they added up to a big fat zero. They just wanted the basics. They wanted to confirm the visitors are who we think they are. Tell us what they're doing. Which content is working, which isn't. Where the trouble spots are. Are they getting what they need? And if not, tell us why. Help us figure out what is it do they really want. The irony here is that I stand before you speaking in these very earth-shattering tones about something that's not groundbreaking at all. Nor should it have been. We just needed to start and start simple. So the answers to the questions we got that day became the foundation for our executive dashboards. Because if everyone in the organization cares about the same things, then it should, in theory, follow that the executives do too, right? Well, interestingly, at least to me, um, my favorite metric in our dashboard is our uh, visits by customer metric, uh, based on the domains that are visiting the site. And you might think that's kind of a bit basic. Uh, what's so exciting about that, early on in my tenure at this company, uh, it was reported to me that there was a systemic belief in sales and marketing groups alike that because of our business model, which has a very uh, tight sales motion, that our customers never need to visit the site. They get everything they need from the sales and marketing folks that are managing those relationships. And I heard this belief repeated many times from different people. Well, how would you know if what you believed wasn't actually true? I've always thought, that, uh, sorry, it turns out, actually, that it wasn't true. Uh, indeed, it was as absurd a notion as it sounds. And once we started the monthly reporting of visits or sessions by customers and circulating it internally, after a few months, I never heard of this silly notion ever again. So an interesting byproduct of that first meeting is that there was some benefit of each party in the room or on the call hearing that this other person in some other part of the organization that they never dealt with wanted very similar things to what they wanted. 
And the investor, investor relation folks were aligned with the product marketers and the customer support, support folks as well. They went from a posture of, oh, we're a special snowflake and the web team doesn't really get what we do, to one of uh, natural consensus and uh, even collegiality. We almost high-fived. Now, if you do what we did, now you've got the whole organization on your side. You're no longer the problem. You're trying to create a solution. And you can choose to see this as a, se a self-imposed uh, pressure and expectation coming from these stakeholders, or you can choose to see it as wind in your sails. Either way, it can work. If you're having trouble getting started, you just do this. You set up this dynamic where now there's expectation, and it's on you. There's nothing more motivating than that kind of social or professional pressure, something like an accountability partner. And this dynamic can keep things moving and it creates a snowball effect over time. Next, don't hoard your data. I think I've heard that theme before today. Don't lock it away. Invite those stakeholders to get trained up on how to read those reports, the dashboards, whatever it is. We did so, and what we found that there were generally two kinds of uh, two ways that it would play out at an individual level. One, you either convert another disciple into the data-driven culture that you're trying to create usually one that actually embraces the work that goes into understanding the data so that it actually has the potential to become, to, for that person to become a partner with you and help work with you. Or you might create a congregant, one who actually exceeds the expectation to you because now they understand the depths to which they have to go to understand something and they'll just as soon cede that to you, that role for you without question. Finally, once you've got these methods and tools in place, use them. Every web project has to have an analytics component. Gathering a team for anything from a new landing page to an entire site redesign must include the analytics team member or members. At a minimum, you gotta ask the question without fail, how will we use data to measure success? Much like you don't wanna call the designer after you've built and launched a page to get their input, the analytics has to have a seat at the table at the start every time. It's not an afterthought. Don't forget to pedal, you might crash. Always be asking the questions about how to measure success and how to make it practically automatic or even reflexive. It's really on you as the internal champion in this dynamic to push for this. Agitate diplomatically if you need to. This addition to your process might be the toughest. I've found for us anyways, uh, it adds a layer of complexity to the work. More voices, more cycles, more requirements, more noise. But at the end of the day, it is worth it. And the reason I say this can be exemplified as something that happened uh, in our recent past. So it was two years later. We built the foundation. We've implemented our enhancements, Google Tag Manager, user surveys, crazy AP maps, the works. We're asking the questions we didn't know how to ask before, and we've got the dashboards and the reports to answer them. And a request from the business comes in, prefaced by, I don't know if this is possible, but I was wondering, can you tell me about my landing page? I've got these three videos. Which one of these videos is the, are the users clicking on the most from this page? She had new content to add, she needed to pick one to take down. Instead of making a gut call and choosing her favorite or her least favorite to take down, she called us and we had the data to provide an answer quickly and easily. It's a little thing, but it's those little things like so many tracked clicks in Google Analytics that add up to get us to this point, which seemed like a long way away just a couple of years ago. But by getting started, by being open and inclusive in the process and keeping analytics at the table for every project, we built it up over time and evolved it to where we are today, and we'll continue to evolve it now that we're a new company in Colorado. If you see yourself in any part of my story, I hope uh, I provided a little bit of value and insight today into what's possible. The first step might seem like a leap of faith, but you take another step, and you just keep going. Thank you.